uh, Op Center, you name it. He ran the Camp David Accords as the head of State Department PSYOPs, helped found Delta Force with General Boykin, uh, worked with, of course, Bush Sr. and many others. Very interesting guy. And he was, of course, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations until he resigned. And I remember uh, seeing articles that he was writing critical of the system back in early 2002. So I called, got him on the show. And sure enough, he came on and boy, a lot of heat got brought out against myself, him. He got visits, I got visits. Uh, then Walter Cronkite, Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright later. Um, Benazar Bhutto, the Pakistani president, went public and said that bin Laden had died a long time ago, that it was a hoax, that they were hunting him. They killed her, machine gunned her. Our news had announced that she'd hit her head on her car, even though it was video of her being shot. This is the government saying two plus two equals five. Obama saying raising debt doesn't raise debt. Or you didn't build your business. They are attempting to overthrow reality and gaslight us, but it isn't working. Dr. Steve Pachinik is a medical doctor, also a psychiatrist, uh, and he also, uh, Harvard University, multiple degrees, and MIT. And he's done a lot of secret work from North Korea to you name it. Uh, and stevepachinik.com, he joins us. Steve, you got a short segment here, a long segment coming up, but this is, you know, 25 minutes we've got left here today on this live Sunday edition. I know you don't want to get into the whole bin Laden raid itself or your sources or whatever, but you've been borne out correct 13 years ago on my show. Now this new Navy SEAL, <coughs> conflicting stories with others, night and day, comes out, uh, this O'Neill guy, and says that he killed the Easter Bunny a couple years ago uh, on May Day. What is the truth and why is this story so big and why have in WikiLeaks emails with Stratford and the CIA, they're freaking out about our interviews. That's been in the news. Why are they so scared of us saying this is a fraud, Dr. Steve Pachinik? Well, the real issue is that Alex Jones and Dr. Steve Pachinik combined reached out to millions of Americans and worldwide and say, look, the 9-11 stand down was created by Bush Jr. and Cheney and Rumsfeld. So Osama bin Laden was already dead and had been dead from Marfan syndrome. No one could contradict that. No one ever has contradicted it. The worst part is that on your show in 2002, you and I discussed an issue where I predicted that whomever would be president of the United States, whomever, I had no idea it would be Obama. I had no idea whether it was a man or a woman. I said on the day that president declares that we are finished in Iraq and Afghanistan, we will have killed, and that day he will claim that we will have killed Osama bin Laden. And true to form, the president of the United States, 10 to 11 years later, Obama, uh, comes out and says he killed Osama bin Laden, which was absolutely absurd. Both the narrative and the prediction was such that the entire intelligence community of America was tied in a knot because Dr. Steve Pachanik and Mr. Alex Jones predicted that a president of the United States, along with a military and civilian intelligence corps consisting of thousands of people and billions of dollars, would predict that Osama bin Laden, who was already dead for 10 years from Marfan syndrome, would be declared dead by a SEAL Team 6. Now, the reason why this is a disaster is because not only is the credibility of Bush Jr., uh, destroyed. Not only is the credibility of Obama destroyed, but the credibility of Bill Clinton is destroyed because Bill Clinton has not been brought into this issue for a long time. But Bill Clinton was involved in rendition and the pre prelude to the Osama bin Laden story because he had already sent physicians from the CIA that summer before Bush Jr. came in and it was a continuity issue between Clinton and Bush Jr. So the entire administration is now facing a credibility and legitimacy issue when already three SEALs come out, each one claiming they shot the bunny rabbit. There's no way they could have shot a man who was already dead. First of all, whatever that raid was, whether it existed or not, I, had, I couldn't care less. But what happened, in effect, is that the, the credibility of Admiral Mullen, the credibility of Panetta, Secretary of Defense, the credibility of Gates, the Secretary of Defense, the credibility of John Brennan as the director of the CIA, the credibility of James Clapper as director of national intelligence, is entirely brought forth and delegitimized. So you're talking about an entire intelligence system plus a White House and three, 30 years whose legitimacy has been 
delegitimized. And now you have Bush Jr. coming out and saying he wants to write a book about his father. He's a painter. And Clinton trying to re retool his wife to a system that's already been destroyed. Don't they get there's been a major political realignment that you and others predicted at the state level and that and that it doesn't matter who you are, or what color you are. People are sick of the system. The military is almost completely awake. The police I talk to are awake. In fact, I'm always criticizing government. It seems to be people in uh, the security services, if you'd call them, that seem to be the most awake. Isn't that a problem for the corrupt establishment? That it is a major problem for the corrupt establishment. Let me hark back, and I'm not going to go into, you can call us conspiracy theorists, but I'll be it as it may, the issue of John F. Kennedy being assassinated is a very real issue in this country. And a civilian president lies and distorts the truth to the entire country, but at the same time puts his in intelligence service at a very risky point. Now, let me back, give you an example. Fifty years ago, when John F. Kennedy decided, and he was not a good president, he had Addison's disease, yet nobody discussed it. He came in, was indecisive, yet he displayed the, our entire intelligence system, the CIA, all over the world in covert operations, which they were not effective in. And Eisenhower said repeatedly to the CIA and Alan Dulles, you are a legacy of ashes. Subsequently, we have an entire intelligence system in the billions with 16 different units that are not really effective. And they came out even publicly, the CIA said, oh, we haven't armed rebels very well. Well, what happens when you distort and you play with our intelligence system? They come back and they will reprimand the president in ways that the president has no idea. Let me give you an example. When we had the Ebola epidemic, who do you think we went to? Did we go to the CDC? No. They were ineffective. They were civilians. No, it really so is true government. that no other agency works other than the military. That's correct. Our military under General Dempsey, who's been very effective in controlling the military, maintaining command and control, and also disagreeing with the President of the United States, has been able to... And run. now they're trying to politicize and ruin the, the, the Navy with the SEALs. This is, just, this is dangerous. This is not only dangerous, it's disgraceful. Every naval admiral, but now they have a present new chief of naval operations, who I hope will reprimand McRaven, who was in charge of special forces when this occurred, and knew he was lying, as well as Stanley McChrystal, who knew he was lying because he had already abused one of our own uh, armed, armed, armed uh, officials, and uh, he killed one of our own soldiers, friendly fire, and will also reprimand Mullen, Gates, Panetta, who has been in egregious in his attempts to self-aggrandize at the expense of the President of the United States, he was the one who created this nonsense in this movie that Catherine Bigelow created, and I tried to stop, which was called Zero Dog Thirty. Total, absolute nonsense. The fact that Obama, Osama bin Laden was even tracked or in any way uh, trolled was nonsense. Everyone knew in the system that he was dead and that the narrative would never work. Sure, I mean, he was it near was death children. whenever Stratus Ivy in the Army was ordered to stand down uh, in early 2001. Correct. And so our military officers, now remember, many of these military officers have come up through the ranks, have never seen combat. They came in through the Iraq War, the first Iraq War, so they only saw 36 hours of combat. Many of them are generals, admirals, and Air Force generals who've been dismissed, by the way. Dempsey and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff have done a very good job of getting rid of our Air Force generals of the nuclear draft. I will stay there, Steve Buscemi. Let's talk about the power struggle in the government, the different, the different power groups that are there, because this whole bin Laden thing is just a bird's eye view, a window into what's really happening, and an example of how shoddy their psyops are Steve Pachenik. Straight ahead, I'm Alex Jones. When you're out on the road, the last place you want to be is on the road. But if the unfortunate happens, you'll be glad you were wearing diamond gussets. There's a place down in Tennessee where they make blue diamond gusset jeans. They so pride in every stitch Guarantee you love the way they fit They put a diamond gusset in 
the crotch where you need it most. Blue Diamond Gus, it's got it. Others don't. We turn jeans inside out. Diamond Gusset Jeans. Made in the USA with unparalleled quality. Our Defender motorcycle jeans combine gusset comfort with Kevlar protection so you can ride all day with confidence. Order yours at gusset.com. Diamond Gusset Jeans got it. Others don't. The experts are clear. Sunlight, purified water, healthy non-GMO food, and having a good attitude is essential to a healthy immune system. But I go further with Super Nascent Iodine X2 from InfoWarsLife.com. 50% stronger than our original and revolutionary nascent iodine formula, coming from a deep earth crystal source that no other supplier has. Most other forms of iodine come from seaweed in areas plagued by Fukushima and other contaminants. Not our iodine. It comes from over 200 100 million year old crystal salt deposits and is tested and proven to be completely pure. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today. See the informational videos. Read the information there compiled. And for a limited time, when you use promo code NOW at checkout, you get an additional 5% off the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products. Secure your Survival Shield X2 today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the security basketball. Alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. You let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. It's a popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulted. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at infowars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative destroy Prison Planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out. Intellectually, it's because you can feel it. Using unparalleled research in the development of a synergistic formulation based around the key concepts of super oxygenation, the next level in cleansing is here. With key ingredients backed by real clinical studies, the new Oxy Powder, available through InfoWars Life, was invented during Dr. Group's research on the toxification of our bodies. Many herbal colon cleansers are harsh on the body and contain cheap and potentially dangerous ingredients, oftentimes full of synthetic fillers, GMOs, additives, or worse. Gently start cleaning your body with easy capsules that start working while you sleep. Oxy powder does not require time off work, and there's no need for bad tasting concoctions. Instead, Oxy powder slowly releases monoatomic oxygen into the intestinal tract and body. Experience the astonishing cleansing power of superoxide and ozonide technology. Go to InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com to get started with Oxy powder, or call 1-888-253-3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. He aligns himself with the truth, and it's time for you to choose a side. You're listening to Alex Jones. We'll be back, Lord willing, tomorrow live, 11 a.m. Central, InfoWars.com. Check out our guest's amazing website with all the articles and videos, stevepachinik.com. At the end of the show, I'll tweet out his website at Real Alex Jones, along with the special report, Navy SEALs ensnared in Bin Laden death hoax, a new special video report up on the site. CNN is in a death spiral right now. So is MSNBC. Fox is declining. All the major media is collapsing, not just because of competition, but because they've discredited themselves. I guarantee you, I could go on and just read news articles on the platform CNN has into billions of households worldwide and have 20 million viewers an hour during prime time in a matter of weeks. By the way, I've been on Piers Morgan and he went from a million viewers that night to three and a half million one night. And for a week, his ratings were double and then trailed off. So, so I've proven it.
and I'm not even bragging. You could put an old man or a young lady just covering interesting news up there, and, and they would have high ratings. People want to, but this is so crafted, so manipulated, so controlled, so BS'd, so managed with the optics that people see it as phony. So, so the fact is, the fact that my little broadcast is so successful shows how dead on arrival they are. And me and Dr. Pachinik were talking about this here in a break. The whole system is having collapsed credibility. And things are devolving to the states in a good way. And there is a major political realignment. Not that this election's perfect, but it signals the, the true awakening. Dr. Pachinik, you've got the floor for the last 10 minutes. Talk about the awakening or what your view is on it, expounding on that, where you see things going. And then talk about the real power structures in this country. Certainly the Army's not perfect, the Navy's not perfect, the Air Force, the Marines. But because they, they are basically all that's left of old Renaissance America, that's why I can pull up countless headlines and, and declassify documents where number one enemy, returning veterans, number one enemy, returning vets, number one enemy, gun owners, libertarians. I, I mean, didn't the Obama administration know that when they went in and tried to train the non-enlisted officer corps or the general enlisted, excuse me, the non-commissioned, that that would wake them up? I, I mean, things like that, saying the military's the enemy shows that we must have some traitors in charge. Let me, let me put it this way. Uh, we have an, a phenomenal uh, country. Unfortunately, we don't have leaders that are equivalent to the greatness of our country. What do I mean? Despite all of the problems that we've recently had, the Ebola epidemic, what happened? The military did not wait. Uh, General Dempsey, at his initiative, decided to send out over 4,000 uh, brave uh, men and women in our army Liberia, not just to have them contaminated or be contaminated. On the contrary, what was used was intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. They took all the drones from Afghanistan and Pakistan and used it over Liberia and Sierra Leone to monitor and evaluate the degree of the crisis in the Liberia and Sierra Leone. In turn, they developed hospitals where, in turn, they had a command and control system which overrode the CDC and the non-existent of the Surgeon General. So the civilians failed. The President of the United States failed. The CDC failed. The director of the CDC failed. And the Public Health Service failed. As a result, our military went in command and control of Moab, did not ask for permission, was very successful in building the capability. And the Ebola epidemic will be ceased and, and stopped because of that and because of their initiative. In turn, we have a director of national intelligence, James Clapper, who's been in our system for over 30 years and has not been and has, was asked to resign and refused to resign repeatedly, even though Obama denigrated him publicly, saying his intelligence wasn't good enough. Yet this past week, he was able to extradite and extract two American citizens quietly from North Korea. So we have an amazing military under General Martin Dempsey, who's very modest very quiet, and very effective. The problem is within our military corps, we've had the braggadocio, the self-aggrandizing man. That came out of the Navy. Why the Navy? Because in turn, the Navy was very responsible or reacted inappropriately to the demands and control of Bush Jr., John Brennan, the CIA. And this, I go back to, General, to Admiral Mullen, uh, McRaven, Admiral McRaven, the head of special forces, who should never, never have used the Navy in any way for propaganda or promoted his own self-aggrandizement in saying that he killed uh, specifically Osama bin Laden. Nor should the president of the United States lie to the American public that Osama bin Laden was killed by him or anybody but else. But since you started talking about this on my show 13 years ago, now it's admitted it's so clear from being outside government. Well, it's a lie. Of course it was. But, but, no but, I mean, I, but it's so clear. It's so clear, though, that there are interagency wars. The FBI fighting with the CIA. The NSA fighting with the CIA. But then they're all lined up uh, generally attacking the actual armed services because that's the only thing that goes back to George Washington. That's the only thing they haven't taken over completely. And they know the military isn't going to take the guns. They know they're awake. They know they're like the best people we've got. And so that's why there's this open demonization of the veterans, which is jumping the shark, Dr. Pachenik. 
Well, this is exactly what I'm trying to say. We said this for a long time. Number one, the CIA really has to be scrubbed out and cleaned out. Brennan has to be fired, and so do the DDOs, the covert operatives, and the DIs, the analysts. For too long, and for a very long time, they've been under the influence of the Bush family, the Clinton, and others who went to Yale. It is a disastrous organization. For the 30 years that I've been in and out of government, I could barely rely on the CIA. They are experts on 9-11 and stand down. There was no question that the man who told me this was a stand down worked for Paul Wolfowitz. There's no question that the Jewish neocons who were involved, Wolfowitz, Earl, Elliot Abrams, and those have to be brought up for trial and tribulation. There's no question that Bush and Cheney. But until we do that, this government will not be clean of sin. And by the way, Dr. Bushina, you're Jewish. Yes, I am. I'm very proud I'm Jewish, but I'm not proud of those who acted against our government and those who inspired the Israelis to work against our own interests. So Israel and being Jewish does not mean that you're Jewish in temperament or so. Most of the Americans really don't care whether you're Jewish or Christian or Muslim, but they do care that if you're American. Unfortunately, American Jews have no idea of their own history of the anti-Semitism and the fact that they were manipulated into a position where they created this 9-11, the stand-down, and Israel was, in fact, involved with Mossad operating. That's not fictitious. That's not theoretical. That's a fact. The sure. How, how many countries were involved? So, Saudi Arabia, clearly, well, as well. Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, the ISI, the ISI of Pakistan, that's the Inter Service Intelligence Service of Pakistan. You're talking about Israel, Mossad operatives, who were already in my house in June before that 9-11. And you're talking about the United States. But the primary... Listen, I got visited operative. by a major Mossad operative. Uh, well, yes, but you know, the Mossad in Israel is insignificant to Israel now, to America. They're a strategic liability. David Petraeus said it, I've said it, and now... No, I know, but you also got visited and threatened by British intelligence, basically, correct? Well, yeah, the British have been involved. The British are secondary countries. They're not relevant to the United States. The United States is only relevant to itself and its position in the world. Well, I, I mean, right I want now, listeners to understand, though. I mean, you co-wrote books with Tom Clancy. You're a famous spy. You're well-known with the Army the rest of it. I mean, you're not making this stuff up from your perspective. Well, I'm and not making it up. I said it 13 years ago. Bush, Rumsfeld, Cheney, uh, you know, Rumsfeld and, and Condoleezza Rice are very much responsible as well as Steve Hadley. The well, Neo Condoleezza Trump. Rice called Mayor up. Willie Brown and said, don't fly to New York tomorrow. And again, I just want to be clear, there's a lot of criminal groups, whether it's U.S., Israel, Britain, Pakistan, all of them have criminal groups within, manipulating, keeping people in the dark. But, but undoubtedly, there are radical Islamists that are being funded and allowed to attack. And I really loved it a month ago when General Dempsey was in there being grilled by uh, by that little uh, guy, uh, the uh, the uh, senator on the Armed Services Committee, Lindsey Graham, and Graham said there are no Muslims, uh, you know, countries funding funding ISIS, and Dempsey said, of course they're funding it. We're basically funding it too. So I do see that Dempsey stopped the attack on Syria, and 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 that the the military is saying no to a lot of this. So I think America's always calling for a military coup. I think what you're getting at is there's kind of a soft coup, a soft refusal to take the guns to start the civil war. Our military will never attack a civilian. I can assure you that. However, our own civilians will attack civilians, i.e. the CIA, the President of the United States, three of them, Clinton. Let me be sure. Let me make it certain. Bill Clinton and Hillary were very much a part of 9-11. They're not absolved of this. Jeb Bush. No, I know. They ordered to stand Bush out on killing bin Laden in 96 and 98. Dr. Bushenik, you're on fire today. We're going to have to have you up for a full hour this week to get into this. Will you come back? Thank you, Alex, and thank your people, and thank America. We're, we're on a good road. We, we, we're doing the right thing, and we've come to the right position. But thank you, Alex, for being very brave. Well, yeah, well, I know I get. I can tell you, this is dangerous, folks. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon, Dr. Pachenik. Thank you. Uh, in fact, let's talk to him now. Set him up in the next few days so he can do it. That's it for today, folks. God bless you all. What you heard there was hardcore. Hope you know that. You're not going to hear it anywhere else. <laughs> InfoWarsLife.com. Check it out today. I have set out to bring you the most hardcore, cutting 